And obviously, postmodernism means not just the cutting edge, but beyond. Divisions in history never exist, only individuals. Yet my perceptions make my moment in time real. Yeah, well, I mean, that's great that you have so much passion for art history, but I I'd love to see that same passion communicated in this month's Oh, art really, Mr. Executive Producer? Now I'm not passionate enough for art news? I work for free. No, I didn't say that. Uh, no, you actually did, and I'm pissed. Come on. I, I mean, we got a lot of news. There were collaborations uh, that went on. Um, you know, I've got a whole bunch of tip segments that will help people to get more viewers on uh, YouTube. What about Cliff Roth and Splintered Studios and Max Power 285? Hey, now you're starting to. What about Yaz and her overlooked artist segment? Someone didn't do his homework. Okay, seriously? What Numbnuts is trying to say, with passion, is that we have a great show for you today. Pablo, I'm driving. In addition to highlighting the great art on YouTube, we're going to teach you some really useful information that will help you have an advantage on YouTube. I can't see. We're going to teach you how to auto-tag your videos so that you never have to spend as much time doing that ever again. Move the box. We will also show you an article written by YouTube that tells you the most influential factor in being featured in related videos and recommended channels. That's great. Move the box. Also, straight from the Hangouts on Kazan g &M, we're going to quote drawing tips from Sophie Chan 90, Sykra, I Draw Girls, and Cartoon Block. You're paying my but ticket. But there's more. We're going to teach you how to access YouTube's library of over 4 million Creative Commons videos and show you a strategy to boost your daily subscribers. I'm Pablo Van Warhol, and this is YouTube Art News. Hey there! Uh, for this month, um, for YouTube Art News, 3D and Conceptual Art, I'm looking at the work of different toast artists. Uh, in particular, a video which is kind of a compilation of different forms of toast art. Uh, it's by Max Power 285 And what he does in this video is he shows a lot of variations of different types of toast art. Kind of an overlook of the whole genre. Anything from uh, toast mosaics to simple toast drawings. So uh, give it a look and the great thing is is that you're going to find a ton of links to other videos by more specific um, toast artists. So if you, if you get really interested in it, it's, it's definitely worth checking out. Alright, well, I'm going to get this started. i got to get ready for work. Video Tags after spending six hours making a video, who wants to add them? But our executive producer, Meryl Kazanjian, is going to teach us a way to set default video tags that will show up whenever you upload a video. Thank you, Pablo Van know it all. Anyway, this segment is going to teach you how to do video tags so that you only have to do them once. These tags will show up automatically every single time that you upload a video. Watch this clip. The first thing you need to do is log into your account. I logged into my backup account since I was introduced by our backup host, Pablo Van Warhol. Then, click on your username and go to Settings. From Settings, click on the Defaults tag and then you should see three empty boxes. Title, description and tags. When you put information in these boxes, the same information will show up in all of your videos. I recommend that you choose general tags that are applicable to all of your videos future and present. Your Facebook, Twitter and DeviantArt are great links that you could add to the description every time. Remember to choose tags that truly represent your content or you will start attracting the wrong viewers. And now it's time to go beast mode, something that Pablo clearly doesn't know anything about. Josh Waddy interviewed, perhaps, the man that could be known as 
the Mark Crilly of Google+. His name is Cliff Roth. What's up ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of YouTube Art News. This is Josh Whitey 16 aka Andy Joshua Art, aka the most beast mode artist on YouTube. Today in my segment, which is normally the viral art video report, which it still is, but it's a little bit different today. Instead of showing you guys a video that went viral on YouTube, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight with a interview from a Google Plus extraordinaire, none other than Mr. Cliff Roth. So let's show you a couple clips of the interview. What do you think, Mr. Pig? <coughs> well, let's do it. So uh, what, what advice would you give somebody that's looking to try to get into uh, doing what you do on Google Plus? Um, just start doing it. Join, join like uh, hangouts you see that other, get yourself invited to hangouts of people who are uh, more well known than you are so that or um, have a bigger sphere of influence than you do so you can just introduce yourself. Um, that's one way you can do it. Another way is to just open up a public hangout, title it, you know, drawing people live or whatever you want. Whatever you think will entice people. And if it's public, people will join it. So I spent almost an hour and a half talking with Mr. Cliff Roth about different things having to do with art, digital art, a whole lot of different topics. Yes, I, I do use a tablet. I use a uh, Wacom Cintiq 21UX, which is that's the hangout on my iMac. There's the, that's the tablet I use. Wow. That looks really, really nice. So how long have you been, uh, you know, artistic? How long have you been doing what you do, or when did you start? Um, I don't know, grade school. Grade school, huh? I mean, I, I mean, I had to put something in my notebooks. Right. So, I mean, I would doodle in class, and my kid doesn't, and I just never stopped. Yeah, I'd rather doodle than take notes. That's what I did. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I can remember more. I could remember more that way. If I look at like old, you know, duels, I'm more likely to remember what it was that was going on around me than I am if I look at an old uh, uh, notebook. If you want to see the full interview? I will be uploading it to my page, Josh White 16, on YouTube. If you want to check out Mr. Cliff Roth himself, I will put the info for you in the description box, linking you to his Google Plus account. Check him out. I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy his work. I'll see you next time. Viral Art Video Report with Josh White 16, aka Andy Josh Art, aka the most beast mode artist on YouTube. You're watching the most beast mode artist on YouTube. Did you know that there are over 4 million Creative Commons videos on YouTube that you could use as clips in any of your videos? I mean, think about that. You can get clips from across the earth. Uh, you can get specific things instead of having to go out and like film something new. So I'm going to teach you how you get access to these clips. Do a search for any term that you're interested in and then press search like you always do. Then. Go to the button that says Filter and press Creative Commons. All of the results that you see will be Creative Commons videos that you could use in your own videos. Remember that it's very important that you credit whenever you use somebody else's video. A link in the video description will be fine. And now I have another tip for you that I guarantee you will increase your subscribers substantially. Insight is now giving data on annotations. It's at the very bottom before the send feedback button. My suggestion is to use the annotation editor to add subscription boxes to videos that don't have them. First you have to click on the add annotation tab and you can choose any one of the choices. Then you move the box to the part of the screen that you want and then click the tab that says link. Now move the second tab to subscribe and type in your channel name. Use the new insight data on annotations to see how your new subscription boxes are doing. 
Track this carefully, and you'll get a lot of subscribers. Back to you, Pablo. Hmm. In our 2D segment, Thad Taylor profiles Stephen Quick from Splintered Studios. Let's take a look. Hey guys, it's Thad for Thad Taylor Art, and I want to bring you guys another great artist, Stephen Quick of Splintered Studios. Roll the intro. Stephen Quick hails out of the UK and does paintings of epic nerd icons and music idols. He uses acrylic paint and paints in a grayscale with usually one or two accent colors to make his paintings really pop. This technique gives his paintings a unique feel and tone. The way he makes his videos is very entertaining. I myself have been subbed for about two years to his videos and he never ceases to amaze me. He has over 3,000 subs and is growing very quickly because of his excellent subject matter. A link to his channel is below. Go subscribe, like, and comment on his videos. Tell him that the YouTube Art News sent you. And until next month, I'm Thad Taylor. My channel is in the description below. I'll see you guys next month. Peace. August 2012 has been the month of the collaboration. In that spirit, Pablo and I are going to put our differences aside. Thanks, Meryl. Cartoon Block drew Ty Moss from Ty's iPhone help. Cartoon Block gained more than 1,000 avid new fans through making a video for a channel with over 200,000 subscribers. And YouTube highly recommends this. Here's Tyler with the scoop on Krilly and Sophie. What's going on, everybody? My name is Tyler from Tyler's Art Check here on YouTube, and this month, I'm going to share with you some awesome breaking news. So you all probably know who Sophie Chan 90 is. She is an excellent manga artist on YouTube with about 50,000 subscribers after she gained quite a few thousands of subscribers after having a collaboration with the one and only Mark Krilly. That one guy with 650,000 subscribers on YouTube, the number one artist on YouTube, that guy. She is like winning the lottery with that opportunity. That's a one in a lifetime event and it's she's very lucky very fortunate and I'm very happy that she got that opportunity hey there everybody it's Mark Crilly I'm back with another how to draw video actually this is more of a how to color video and the drawing that you're looking at here is not by me it is by Sophie Chan the great uh, YouTube video creator and uh, she and I have decided to do a collaboration on this video she did the pencils and I'm gonna add the color alright everyone so I hope you all get a chance to check out this awesome collaboration I'll put a video link right here which you can click on that will open up a new window so that you can come back and watch this one when you're done and then also check out a hangout we'll put that somewhere in this general area uh, we did a hangout with her a little while ago uh, it lasted about an hour that was a great opportunity for the whole audience to do a general Q&A with her it was a great experience so I hope you enjoy this one and I'll see you all next month take care thank you Tyler uh, a very important article was posted on August 10th to the YouTube creators blog it basically outlined how uh, youtubers do well in search and related videos uh, which of course drives more viewers to your channel. Um, it stated that the most important factor that influences placement in search and related videos is audience retention time. Um, it used to be views, it used to be likes, uh, now it is audience retention time. So um, <laughs> maybe now instead of saying, hey, hit the like button, maybe now people can say, hey, watch the whole entire video uh, because that will make uh, a huge difference. Uh, it goes on to say in the article that YouTube is planning on competing against the television networks in the future. Didn't directly say that, but if you read between the lines, you know, you know what I mean. And right now, um, YouTube is the fastest growing format. Uh, online video is the fastest growing format, but they're going up against the establishment. So what do they want? They want people to be watching uh, and engaged in the videos longer. Uh, so just a tip, you know, for us artists, uh, you want to create engaging content, uh, whether it be through instruction um, or whatever else. 
uh, to keep people watching your videos and you will do better in search. It is like stated plain as day in this article. Anyway, next we have Yaz and her segment, uh, which will highlight some up-and-coming artists on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears we have some breaking news. Breaking news. Big deal. So here's the breaking news. I am not Yaz, but you know that already. Yaz has been having computer issues, uh, so filling in this month is my dog Coco. She's going to put two of her favorite channels that she feels are really underviewed. So, Coco, thank you, it's all yours. Thank you, this opportunity to use my knowledge in canine aesthetics. Despite my short attention span and my tendency to lick myself while watching YouTube, I am impressed with the artwork of Clay Guy One and Gavin O'Donnell art. I shed a lot when I think about the fact that Gavin only has 111 subscribers. Meryl hates it when I shed. That means he has to vacuum. He is a photorealist who can draw like the portrait art so hit the fucking link people. Tell him Coco sent you. Clay Guy One is a great channel to learn about anatomy and sculptural processes. Mr. Lemon has over 40 years of experience in the arts. That is like 3000 dog years. You will learn a lot. Anyway, back to you, Meryl. And I will be expecting extra kibble later. Thank you, Coco. You did an excellent job. Next, we have Orange Monkey 92 segment, uh, and he's going to highlight the top 25 artists on YouTube according to subscriber rankings. And immediately following that, we are going to hear uh, words of advice uh, from some of the top artists on YouTube. So over the last month, I've had the great fortune to hang out with some of YouTube's finest artists, and uh, they've said some pretty profound things. Let's take a look. Um, I, I know that um, you know we have an audience, uh, a, a lot of people who are, you know, who who want to work in the art industry. Um, yeah. What would you suggest? What would you consider to be um, the best advice to give those people in terms of what to study, um, in, in terms of um, paths? Oh shit, that's something. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I would say look at look 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 at whatever your favorite video games or favorite movie are, and look at the credits, and see who does what, and look up that name on the internet, and look at his portfolio. And if you want to get in on the same path that he is, then you got to make your portfolio look at least you know as good or up to that part. Then when you send it to the game company, sometimes I would say you know most of the time they are not gonna like look at them all. But if you stand out, then they look at. It. And sometimes even if you're good, then it's about the timing. I guess a, a piggyback question would be: Did you ever take art lessons? And do you look at a picture draw or draw from your mind? Uh, actually, I've never taken any art lessons. Even in wow. school, we didn't really have any art lessons. It was wow. all self-taught. And it was basically me discovering old tools. I used to buy, like, even if there are tools that I'm not really familiar with, I would just buy and then learn how to use. And this is how I improved my coloring. I keep trying. For example, Copic markers. Um, I, I saw a few videos for them, and then I was like, let's try them out. 
And if you see that video is with Copic markers, they're really great at colorings. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so the next question you said, uh, do I look at pictures? Sometimes yeah. I do. In fact, how I started, I just used to look at pictures. And this is like a tip for anyone who really wants to get better. Just go to any anime or any animation or anything, like assuming, for example, Naruto. Try to draw all the characters in Naruto by looking at them. And it's fine. This is not wrong. This is you learning how to draw other styles. Then go, for example, to Death Note and try to, to mimic all other characters. This is how I improved. I used to copy, not by tracing, but just by looking at pictures. I used to draw all characters. And then, until like now, I have developed my own style. So I don't really need to look at reference anymore. Uh, how long does it usually take to draw something for a video, guys? And that comes from Freddy Pierce 1. Freddy, ooh, that can vary. What I usually do is go ahead and practice the drawing first um, to make sure I'm familiar with the character if I haven't drawn it. Um, something you guys may not know about the animation community is that a lot of artists in the business no one character is memorized. About the only character you can memorize is Batman, you know, if, or someone who you draw on a daily basis. But uh, some of the more obscure characters, like um, I don't know, Captain Adam. Okay, <laughs> so uh, everyone may not know what Captain Adam looks like. So uh, you have to practice it for a few seconds. Generally speaking, most people, you know, can just take a character, just put in a superhero body and call it a day.